Today on Detroit Muscle, we're going to get our stroke on. It's Pontiac Power Plant Palooza as we dump the doggy 400-inch engine in our giveaway Trans Am in favor of 550 horsepower worth of stroked and bored fury. Plus, a treasure hunt for another legendary Pontiac. unmistakable lines and an iconic legacy, the 77 and 78 Trans Ams were among the most beloved pony car platforms ever built. Thanks in no small part to Burt Reynolds and Jackie Gleason. But Burt isn't going to be driving this one. One of you guys are, because we're giving it away. The plans that we have for the old Red Dragon include a change of skin, giving it the iconic black and gold special edition look. In addition to that, all the performance specs on this car are going through the roof. Everything from the rear end to the radiator is going to get an upgrade. And that includes a power plant. Now, we were able to sneak our old car up onto the chassis dyno, do it a little bit of tweaking, and getting about 150 horse out of it. And I tell you, it's not too impressive at all. Got that right. Well, today is engine day for this old bird, and the plans Tommy and I have include giving it quite a power boost. Try over 300% of what it had before. Well, time to start tinkering on this Tribute Trans Am. Now, when it comes to Pontiac Performance, we knew exactly who to call. I want you guys to meet Rodney and David Butler with Butler Performance out of Leoma, Tennessee. How are you guys doing? Good, great to be here and look forward to working with you guys again. Just in case you guys haven't heard of Butler Performance, let us introduce you to them. If there's one name that's synonymous with Pontiac Power, it's the guys at Butler Performance known across the world as the go-to gurus for Pontiac engine build, working up anything from a factory restoration to high-end drag racing motors. We've used them before on several builds and are never disappointed in the power and reliability they can build into one of these light blue blocks. So now that you know who these guys are, let's get down to the important stuff. David, what'd you bring for us to play with? We brought a Pontiac 455 block to replace the tired 400 that was in the Trans Am. Mm -hmm. Uh, the good thing about a Pontiac engine, there are no big block or small blocks. They're all the same size, so the 455 is a direct bolt-in where the 400 was. So how does a guy know he's got a 455? First, in the valley, you'll have two fives if it's a 455. If it's a 400, you'll have two zeros here. Okay. Also, on the driver's side, you'll see the engine size cast right into the side of the block. Okay, what about your machine work? Well, we went with a 60 overbore, did a bore and hone with a torque plate, which is really critical on the Pontiac engine. We also square deck the block. As far as the bottom end goes, we replaced the factory dial pins to locate the main caps, replaced the stock bolts with ARP main studs, then we lined home the mains. Well, I know the 78 Trans M came with a 400 inch block. Using it instead of a 455, what would you need to look for? When using a 400, the main thing you want to look for is a thick main versus a thin main block. The thin main block won't handle the horsepower we'll be making with this build. Most 75 and later 400s were thin main blocks, just like you had in your TA over there. Okay, I think we'll keep what we got here. As for a crankshaft, what do you guys like to use? We're going to use this Eagle armor coated crankshaft. It's got a 4.250 stroke, so with our bore size, it's going to end up at 474 cubic inches. Now, when he says stroker, for you guys at home that don't know, this is what he's talking about. An engine's displacement is based around the volume of the cylinders, and it's rated by either cubic inches or liters. The more displacement you have, the more potential for power. This is why you hear people say there's no replacement for displacement. You can increase that amount by increasing the travel of the piston with a longer stroke of the crank, hence the name stroker. Now you can't just buy a crankshaft, throw it in something and make a big bunch of power. All these components have to be matched all together from top to bottom to make big power. That's going to live for longer than a day, am I right? That's correct. Not only match components, but this crankshaft is perfectly balanced to these rods and pistons. As for rods, we're using this Eagle H-beam design. Now this rod is considered a long rod for a Pontiac. It's 6.8 inches long. Now when you guys were unboxing these, I was checking them out. You guys are probably pretty proud of those, aren't you? Yes, we are. This is a Butler Performance exclusive forward draws piston. It features a flat top design and the latest strut design for strength and durability. In the end, Tom, we developed a line of pistons for a number of Pontiac applications that are strong, durable, and they make power. I guess first thing we need to do is drop his cranks. Oh wait, that thing's heavy and we gotta get the main caps off. So I guess we better do that. 
still ahead. We begin construction on the engine for our giveaway Trans Am and get into the nitty gritty about making big power with natural aspiration. Then learn how to decode a GTO to see if you've got your hands on a judge. Okay, we are back and ready to put together the bottom end of our 474 Pontiac engine. And for a rear main seal and a street engine, the butlers recommend a graphite impregnated Teflon rear main seal. And well, I guess we're ready for the crankshaft. Yes, sir. By the way, this 4340 forging is a big upgrade from the Trans Am's stock cast crank. And the ESP armor coating, well, it's going to reduce friction and buy us another 30 horsepower. After lubing up the bearings with Royal Purple Max Tough, the main caps can go on. Rodney puts a dab of ARP Ultra Torque on the studs and nuts before cinching down the mains and torquing them from the center out. In place should be within four to eight thousandths and ours is right at four, so we're in good shape. Rodney's had plenty of experience assembling rods and pistons for street and all-out race engines. He uses plenty of lube and spiral locks to keep the pins in place. Oh, and to keep from butchering up those thumbs and fingers while installing those locks, a small flat screwdriver can be your best friend. Then he does some filing to set each of the end gaps, checking each one inside the bore with a feeler gauge. The gap has to be large enough to allow for expansion when hot, but small enough to control blow-by gases. Next he's installing one piston rod assembly. followed by the camshaft, which is a custom grind hydraulic roller from Comp. It's designed to make plenty of power and torque for the street and provide ample vacuum for the power brakes. With some Loctite thread locker on the retaining bolts, the double roller timing set gets installed. As you probably know, green the cam's the only way to verify the accuracy of your cam grind. And although it's rare, the crank key or timing chain could be off a bit. Butler's Timing Gear Retaining Washer replaces the fuel pump drive that you would be using if you were running a carburetor. Now he can install the rest of the pistons and rod assemblies into the block, then add the rod caps and torque the rod bolts to spec. Now Rodney's just about got our bottom end fixed up and we're ready to move on to the oil pump. Now Butler Performance offers an exclusive pump that's perfect for our build. One common problem with the stockers is this little thin plate. Whenever you combine the high pressure and a quick revving engine, this thing will flex and cause you to lose pressure, and they've solved that problem. Not only is this pump flow tested and blueprinted, there's several other modifications to make this thing one great piece. Next up, we'll take a break from all that drivetrain strain and go on the hunt for a piece of Detroit treasure. See why you have to be on your guard if you've got your eyes on a GTO judge. Then it's back to making horsepower for the TA. Hey guys, as you can tell, we're not in the shop. We're out on the hunt and having a good time. We're trying to take a look at some of those cool cars, expensive cars, rare cars, heck, even those ones that nobody wants. <laughs> Might be a few of those here. <laughs> you know, you don't have to be in Motor City to go hunting for Detroit treasures. And when well, we got word that there might be one out here that is very desirable, but you be the judge. <laughs> With one of the most distinct graphics packages that's ever been laid down on a car, as well as some of the neatest options to go hand in hand with them, this car was destined for glory from looks alone. But make no mistake, this was no sheep in a wolf's clothing, because you might get set down the river if you ever decided to tangle with a judge. In 1969, Pontiac decided that they wanted to steal some of the thunder from Mopar's Technicolor Scat Pack. So they dreamed up one of the most desired muscle cars ever, the GTO Judge. 
with every model including Pontiac's Ram Air 3 or the super hot Ram Air 4 option. This baby was a serious contender in the muscle car wars. Over the years, these cars have been cloned thousands of times from its sister models like the Le Mans and the Tempest, as well as the standard GTOs. And it's exactly because of that that you have to be extra careful when you go on the hunt for these cars. We're going to be taking a few trips around to various junkyards and decoding what could potentially be some of the more desirable cars. A lot of these cars are too far gone and not valuable enough to do anything about, but there are those occasional diamonds in the rough. And if we can uncover a few of them that might be worth saving as well as discovering just what they might be worth, well, it's worth the trip. Today, our target is this 69 Pontiac and we brought along one of the best Pontiac experts that we know to help us decode this supposed GTO judge, Mr. Bill Stovall. But it leads you to believe it's a judge, it says judge on the fender, it's got the judge stripes, it's got the judge, the color that's popular with judges. The first 1500 were painted this color, orange, carousel red, somebody's faking one, of course you got an MM on the dash, you got uh, decals on the fenders, you can buy all that stuff. This car's VIN number starts with the number 242, which indeed tells us it's a GTO according to this book and bill. However, it doesn't say anything about a judge. To determine that, well, we got to do a lot more homework. That 242 number would come back. That automatically makes it to GTO. The judge does not have a serial number per se. With these particular cars, the VIN doesn't detail if it had the highly desired judge option. And if the car's original bill sheet or paperwork can't be found, well, there's only one alternative. You send off to Pontiac Historical Services, and I think it may be 50 or $60 now, they'll send you the paperwork back on that car as it was built originally, the dealer that ordered it, the price of the car, and what options that car had on it. And then one of the options on that car would be the judge. It's written out, the judge, on that sheet. One piece of good news is that there can be some telltale signs that let you know that it's probably not a real judge. Got the wrong engine in it. It would have to be at least a Ram Air 3 or a Ram Air 4 to be a judge. But that still doesn't mean it's not a GTO because you could have that motor in a GTO. I think I've seen enough that I'd be cautious. If you're searching junkyards and all and you say, man, I found me a judge. Well, unless you can verify it, you better buy it at a GTO price and hope when you go home you find out it's a judge instead of paying a judge price for it, going home and find out you got a GTO. Here's a car I came across several years ago. Pretty questionable what you were getting. No GTO markings except the, the side lights on the back and, yeah. and of course the 242 and, and no judge emblems or anything like that on it. So it's a shot in the dark. Bought it as a GTO because uh, I knew it was a true GTO by the numbers on it. And as it turned out, when I sent off the Pontiac Historical Services to get my paperwork, it came back and one of the things underlined was the judge. So this is a true judge, this is a true project car. It's kind of like you won the lottery, you know, but uh, looks are deceiving. You know, the, the car we looked at earlier, you know, it had all the signs of a judge. And this one doesn't have any signs None of a judge. It. Would this make a good project? This would make a good project. It's worth saving. That's pretty amazing, it just goes to show you you don't know what you got, even when you find it sometimes. Looks can be deceiving. I mean, look at Tommy and me after all. Come on, let's go. <laughs> yeah. Well, our curiosity was maxed out regarding that orange car. So we sent off for the paperwork, and it turns out it's a GTO, not a judge. But it is a really high option car. So at least it's got that going for it. And I thought we had something. Stick around for some shinies as we put the top end on our Pontiac power plant and tie a bow on this engine that's going to turn our Trans Am into a rocket. All right, we got our oil pump installed. We just about got the oil pan done, and I've got another cool part I'd like to show you all. Butler Performance offers an exact reproduction of the timing cover. Now, whether you're doing a high performance application or restoration, oftentimes the timing covers have a whole lot of pitting here around this gasket where the water pump seals. Getting one of these can save you a boatload of time. Well, this is one of the Edelbrock Performer heads we're using in our Pontiac engine build. 
It's a true deep port design, which requires a deep flange header. Now that's not to be mistaken with this other head they make, which is a round port design that requires a round shaped header, despite the inverted D's here in the middle. The combustion chambers have a new fast burn design to make more power. And Butler Performance goes the extra mile porting the intake and exhaust ports, machining the deck surfaces, and adding new stiffer comp springs. These heads are resting on high performance gaskets that Butler designed for this setup. Oh, and Edelbrock now offers its own ARP bolts specially made for their heads. After lubing up the bores, we can drop in a set of hydraulic roller lifters. So Dave, is there anything special about the push rod you guys offer? Yeah, we use a restricted push rod with these hydraulic rollers. A lot of people think that's only for race motors, mm -hmm. but for any engine, we want to keep plenty of oil in the bottom end and still give enough oil to the top to lube the valve train. Yeah, because one of the worst things you can do is pump the pan dry, isn't it? Absolutely. Tom, come here, I got a little trivia for you. What you got? Did you know the first rocker arm was invented by a guy named Jonathan Rundle Bacon back in the mid 1800s? Now, I can't say that I did. Did you happen to know him? No, I didn't know him, but <laughs> I do know that uh, they called the tip a Rundle for a long time. Hmm. How about that? Well, I gotta say these things right here are quite a sweet piece and I bet he'd give his right arm or leg for a set of these dudes. Comp Ultra Gold, nothing but the best. These are stud mounted full rollers with a 1.65 ratio. To help our Pontiac keep its cool, we're using a mechanical water pump with a billet impeller that we got from Summit Racing. And to help keep all them moving parts happy, six quarts of comp break-in oil, then we can prime to ensure we've got ample oil flow. It's very important to use an intake manifold that complements the more aggressive cam we installed and the free-flowing exhaust we'll be using. This Performer RPM from Edelbrock is a dual plane that's made for Pontiacs that operate in the 1500 to 6500 RPM range. Plus, the butlers have gone in and opened up the runners to match the head work they did. And with that nice aluminum finish, this thing's gonna make the engine look like a piece of Pontiac jewelry. Well, Dave and Rodney, I wanna say thank you guys for helping us out on the build. And I tell you, I'm pretty excited about getting to drive this thing. Now, as for dyno on this thing just to get the power, well, these guys have put better than 100 of these things together, so they ought to know. 474 will make 550 horsepower, but close to 600 for pounds of torque. Wow. Well, that ought to move that old TA around pretty easily. Oh, so. yeah. You pretty excited about that? That's very stout. 